Now returning to our top story, the news that Irish skipper Roy Keane has been sent home from Saipan. We're joined again by Tony O'Donoghue, who I understand is now on video phone. Tony, can you hear us? I can indeed, Eileen. I'm here in Saipan and uh, shockwaves still reverberating around this small island, and I'm sure all across Europe and the world as well. And Tony, what update have you got for us? Well, it seems that Roy Keane won't quite be going home yet because there's no flight out of Saipan this evening. Uh, the team and the media are due to leave Saipan uh, very early hours of the morning, around 7 o'clock. Uh, but that's a flight to Izumo, which will be the team's uh, next stop in their World Cup preparation. It's a, a base in Japan, and they're there for a week. So Roy's route home will have to be via Tokyo, uh, through to London perhaps, or Amsterdam, and then on to, uh, to Dublin or Cork, or Manchester indeed. And uh, it, it seems that Roy won't be... Uh, making the team's flight tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. He'll have to wait on until at least tomorrow evening here in Saipan. So any reaction from Roy will be out of Saipan and not from, uh, from Dublin uh, or Manchester or indeed from Cork. He hasn't been speaking there, has he, Tony? We bear in mind that it is 10 o'clock at night there now. Yeah, we have been looking uh, to see if we can get a reaction from uh, Roy Keane and uh, there's been no such reaction forthcoming. He spoke to us uh, this morning, as you heard there, and uh, was very forthright in what he had to say about the, uh, the conditions that the players uh, had to endure, as he saw at the uh, training facilities and uh, the, the location of this uh, World Cup, uh, pre-World Cup training base. Uh, but he also said, I'm Roy Keane, I'm like this, sometimes I should shut up, sometimes, but I can't, I can't, I can't keep these things to myself, I have to say what I have to say. Uh, obviously he said a bit too much tonight to Mick McCarthy, he crossed that line and uh, Mick McCarthy felt he had no choice but to uh, throw him out of the Republic of Ireland squad. And what's the mood there like tonight, Tony? Well, among the, uh, the players, it's very tense now, I think. Uh, they've got to try and bond now, uh, just 22 of them, and uh, put their best foot forward because the World Cup is just eight days away and uh, the first game against Cameroon. Uh, but this is a shock to them, of course. And uh, we saw some of the players just a short time ago. And some of the players even went to the, uh, the press conference at the back of the hall. Uh, Jason McAteer and Ian Hart just sneaked in because uh, they're, they're as interested as, as everybody else is as to how this came about. And what happens next? Is there a chance uh, of Roy Keane coming back to the squad now? Well, we asked Mick McCarthy that question and he said absolutely not. He won't be extending an olive branch and uh, it doesn't seem as if Roy Keane... Remember, he already uh, threatened to leave the squad. Then, uh, having spoken to his manager, Alex Ferguson from Manchester United and his family, he decided in the best interest of his family and in the best interest of the Republic of Ireland, he would stay for the World Cup. But he made it very clear to me this morning that it would be uh, his last World Cup and indeed his last campaign in the Green of Ireland because he was going to retire from international football after the World Cup. Well, he didn't even get to play in one, and that's quite a pity, really, because he's been such an influential figure, such an important figure to Ireland over the years. He's a joint top scorer in the qualifying campaign. Without his uh, Herculean efforts, he probably, we probably wouldn't have made it as far as the World Cup finals. I'm thinking in particular uh, his performance against Portugal and indeed against Holland when we beat them in Lansdowne Road. And uh, he was a star performer for Ireland in the World Cup in 1994, just 22 years of age then, and uh, he really was the star performer of many stars in that memorable World Cup. And it was, uh, it would have been nice if Roy Keane could have gone out on the world stage on a high. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen now. OK, Tony, we will leave it there for the moment. We'll hear more from you later, no doubt. Well, we still have with us in studio soccer commentator George Hamilton. George, you've been with the Irish squad at previous World Cups. How do you think they come back from a blow like this? They're resilient people and they're the fighting Irish is uh, renowned everywhere and uh, as I said uh, earlier I feel that uh, with eight or nine days to go to the first match and the change in scenery when they go to Japan that they will get over this but uh, it, it will be a lingering sore at the back that uh, Roy isn't here. Of course they've played matches without Roy Keane and the most recent of those competitive matches was the second leg of the playoff away to Iran where they were beaten 1-0 but they did very well even though he wasn't there. It's not insurmountable. He could have broken his leg. We might have lost him anyway. That's the glass half full but the glass half empty says this is one of the top players of the world every opposing coach has said Roy Keane is the man we're worried about he's not going to be there now that's music to the ears of Schaefer of Cameroon and Fuller of Germany and the Saudi coach as well and what looked like a good group to maybe get out of is going to be all that much more difficult now. Would you be in Steve Staunton's shoes the new captain? 
Steve is going to win his 100th cap against the Germans, assuming he plays in both the matches. He is the most experienced international ever to wear the green of the Republic of Ireland. It's a difficult task he has, but he's the, one of the most level-headed men you could meet. Mick McCarthy is very fortunate to have someone as level-headed and as sound as Steve Staunton. He's got a second coming as an international footballer. He's now the older guy on the pitch, guiding the young guys through. In the absence of Roy Keane, Steve Staunton will rise to the challenge. I have no doubt about that. OK, well now we have Eamon Dunphy on the line, I understand, is that right? No, no. We have news conference um, shots from Saipan being fed to, to us now, so hopefully we can go to those. Tony, can you hear us now? No, we'll have to leave it there yes, for the I moment. Can, Eileen. Hello, Eileen, I'm here. OK, we're trying Hello, to get Eileen, shots of, of Mick McCarthy at the news conference, but it's not working. We'll, we'll go back to George for the moment. George, obviously Mick surrounding himself too by Niall Quinn and Alan Kelly. Niall Quinn, a senior figure in the squad as well. Yes. He's obviously hoping that he can stabilise things and calm people down. Yes, and uh, who'd be in Mick McCarthy's shoes? If Roy Keane, as he's admitted himself, has to shoot off from time to time. Mick is the manager of a squad who are at the World Cup to do their best and he cannot afford to have a disruptive influence. Mick, he, he was in, in back against the wall situation there that he had to send Roy home. He couldn't do anything else and he must have agonised over this for long enough. But it's quite obvious from listening to what Roy had to say, we haven't really had a chance to hear from Mick, the relationship between manager and player, manager and captain had absolutely broken down and that's the end of it. You can't go back from there. If Roy Keane and Mick McCarthy have fallen out, well there's only going to be one winner in that situation and that has to be the manager. OK, well, now we're joined by uh, Eamon Dunphy on a phone line. Eamon, good afternoon. What's your reaction to all these shenanigans in Saipan? <laughs> good afternoon, Eileen. Uh, you're right to describe them as shenanigans. It's not life or death. But um, I'm very, very sad because I think it's a, it's a, a very silly act to send Roy Keane home. Uh, it's not going to benefit anybody. The, the, the football is about the people who watch it, and the Irish fans would want Roy Keane to be playing in the World Cup. So he, the Irish fans won't gain... A, particularly the several thousand who will travel uh, I don't see where the players in the team gain because they're going to be without their best player obviously for Roy Keane it's a difficult moment in his life professional life and uh, Mick McCarthy shot himself in the head you know uh, and the crime he wasn't caught with a lap dancer or doing anything like that uh, he was just uh, speaking his mind about his professional concerns well, uh, in, but in this day and age he should be allowed to do that would you not agree with George Hamilton that Mick McCarthy had no choice and that some of the other senior players, Niall Quinn, Alan Kelly, Steve Staunton, it was too much disruption? Niall Quinn said some people say he was brave, but there's nothing brave about running to newspapers. Well, I would not agree with that. No, I think I, I would be a thousand percent supportive of Roy Keane and I don't think that the manager, managers are paid to manage things, not to create problems.